So, good morning everyone and welcome back to the NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. Um, the last few lectures we have been talking about total synthesis of various alkaloids and today we will continue our discussion on the total synthesis of uh, one more alkaloid called quinine. And the quinine has a very interesting history, uh, the structure of quinine is uh, this one and you can see here there is another uh, epimer uh, which is called quinidine and these two alkaloids were found in the bark of cinchona and remigia species. So, these were originally part of the high forest in anti mountains from Venezuela to Bolivia in South America. Okay. These, these two alkaloids were found in the bark of cinchona and remigia species. And the South American natives they used to call uh, this tree, cinchona tree as quina quina, the bark of barks. And as is the case with many natural products, South American natives they have been using this bark for the treatment of high fever and also much before the Spanish people arrived in South America. As you know, um, most of the South America was uh, taken over by Spanish people in 16th and 17th, 16th, 17th and 18th century. Interestingly, the discovery of quinine got major focus when one of the Spanish viceroy's wife in Peru was diagnosed with malaria and she was cured by giving extracts of this synchronot tree bark. Okay. So, this was a major impact of uh, South America in the treatment of malaria in Europe. Once this news came to Europe, what happened automatically the plantation of synchrona trees uh, started in whole Europe, particularly in Italy where the Rome was considered as the capital of malaria. Okay. So many people were suffering from malaria and this was a big boon that uh, the bark of synchrona tree could be used for the treatment of malaria. So, afterwards as you know uh, people started using this uh, uh, extracts from the bark of synchrona tree for uh, treatment of uh, malaria not only in Rome, but also in other parts of Europe. However, it took 200 years to isolate the pure form of quinine. It took 200 years as I said, only in 1820 two French researchers Pierre Pelletier and Joseph Cavento. So, they isolated the pure form of quinine and afterwards uh, British people they wanted to plant this in their colonies. So, they succeeded in planting this in India and Sri Lanka and then Dutch people also succeeded the same uh, by planting in Java and Indonesia. Incidentally, Java became the major hub for exporting quinine uh, even, even today. And quinine uh, exhibits uh, antipyretic, anti-malarial, analgesic and anti-inflammatory activities. And as I mentioned, and this is the major exporter of uh, the cultivated bark is from Java. And the cultivated bark of uh, singona tree has 7 to 10 percent of this alkaloids, okay? out of which 70 percent is quinine. That means, it has about 5 percent quinine. If you, if you take the bark and then cultivate it, from that you can isolate 5 percent pure quinine which was exported. In fact, US imports about 70 tons of quinine every year, that is a major uh, import. The cost of quinine and quinidine differs little bit, uh, 1 gram of uh, quinine cost about uh, 3 US dollars whereas uh, 1 gram of quinidine cost about 7 US dollars. However, people were always interested in the chemical synthesis of quinine. In fact, if you look at 19th century and 20th century, the one natural product which got maximum attention next to uh, strychnine is quinine. In 1950, French Society of Pharmacy, they announced a cash price of 4000 francs for the group which completes the chemical synthesis of 
कोई नहीं हवर इट टुक मच मोर टाइम टू कम अप विद द सिंथेसिस ऑफ कोई नहीं इनफैक्ट आई वुड से इट टुक अबाउट हंड्रेड मोर इयर्स टू कम अप विद द सिंथेसिस ऑफ कोई नहीं इफ यू लुक एट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ कोई नहीं नाउ यू मे फील दैट इट इज नॉट स्ट्रक्चरली एज कॉम्प्लेक्स एज सम ऑफ द नेचुरल प्रोडक्ट्स बींग आइसोलेटेड इन रीसेंट इयर्स However, one should also remember that when quinine was isolated, there was no NMR, no IR, no mass spectrum. So, without all these techniques, one has to prove the structure of quinine, then go for the total synthesis. Obviously, it's a it must have been very very tough job to assign the correct structure of quinine first. So, those days. um whenever a natural product is isolated and if they find that natural product is showing exceptional activity then they use lot of degradation studies to assign partial structures first so once they uh, assign partial structures then they try to link connect it to come up with the correct structure and always synthesis is considered as the final proof for confirming the structure of isolated natural products so in 1853 pasteur actually reported that quinine is levorotatory okay a year later strecker establishes a correct empirical formula then it took about 50 years okay in 1907 uh, paul rabe proposed the correct structure of quinine okay during this period though the synthesis of quinine was not accomplished lot of efforts were focused on synthesis of pyridines and quinoline so much literature has gone into uh, synthesis of pyridines and quinolines so there are lot of degradation studies known on quinine but in this particular slide i'll talk about four or five reactions where quinine gave some important clue to assign the structure when quinine was treated with acid okay strong acid it rearranged i should say it opened this this bond was cleaved to give a very interesting compound called quinotoxic okay then the same compound when it was oxidized when it was oxidized it gave miro quinine okay miro quinine if you look at this does not have the quinoline part okay the same miro quinine was observed when quinine was treated with dilute hcl for long time okay continuous exposure of quinine to dilute acid for long time converted quinine into miro quinine when quinine was treated with fused potassium hydroxide they could get methoxy quinoline okay that means this whole portion disappeared okay and when it was treated with nitric acid and chromic acid they could get this quinoline with a carboxylic acid here okay then they took quinine reflexed with water okay so they could get this methyl methoxy methyl quinoline okay so these are the uh, important degradation studies which actually gave an idea about what could be the correct structure of quinine however you know as you know you have to make this compound then only you can propose the correct structure so paul rabe was the one who proposed the correct structure of quinine in 1907 and 11 years later he reported a partial synthesis of quinine from quinotoxin we will come to that little later and 25 years later uh, another partial synthesis was reported by ladmir perlock but in 1944 was the year where woodward reported the first formal total synthesis of quinine this was a big news among uh, all synthetic chemists as well as for the world so the synthesis of quinine was considered as a major breakthrough in chemical synthesis and it took almost 70 years
for the first enantio selective total synthesis of quinine which was reported by Gilbert Stock in 2001 and, and another 10 years it took for Jacobson to complete the total synthesis of quinine and quinidine uh, using asymmetric catalytic reaction. However, there was some controversy about uh, the total synthesis of quinine reported by Woodward. So, there were few papers um, questioning uh, the authenticity of the total synthesis of quinine reported by Woodward. So, Robert Williams from Colorado University and his team they completely you know they have just followed the same route reported by Paul Rabe and completed the total synthesis of quinine thus confirm that Woodward indeed completed the formal total synthesis of quinine. So, I will come to that uh, when I talk about uh, total synthesis of quinine by Woodward. So, the first partial synthesis of quinine as I said was reported by Paul Rabe and Kindler and how they reported was the degraded product quinotoxin they took and then treated with sodium hypopromide. Okay. So, that gave that N bromo compound. Okay. This N bromo compound on treatment with sodium ethoxide and ethanol. So, they could get this ketone. Okay. It is a you know just you generate anion and then attack here and goes. And here they got a mixture of two compounds. Okay, based on you know you can see that uh, the this particular serial center uh, they had two isomers. This upon treatment with aluminum powder, okay, this upon treatment with aluminum powder, they could get about 18 percent of quinine which was recrystallized, and then uh, they could see you know complete you know the all the data are matching with their natural quinine. So that's how in 1918. Uh, this one can call it as relay approach, relay approach that means you know you, you start with uh, a compound which was uh, originally from the same natural product degraded compound then convert the same into the natural product which we already discussed when we talked about uh, total synthesis of strychnine by Woodward. Okay. And this quinine not only quinine is used as uh, anti malarial drug afterwards there are many drugs which were which came to the market uh, based on the quinine structure so lot of structural activity studies led to the synthesis of mefloquine primaquine chloroquine now all these drugs you can see quinoline part is same okay only this region is different Okay. Then this is quinidine and this is amodioquine, this is chloroquine and uh, this is called HCQ. So, HCQ as you know uh, it, uh, it was uh, given for the treatment of COVID recently and off late a completely new set of uh, drugs are being used for the treatment of malaria based on this peroxy natural product called artemisinin. So, artemisinin, dihydroartemisinin, artemether, artisunate that is artemisin if you treat with succinic anhydride you get this artisunate. Then this can be given along with amodiaquine for the treatment of malaria. Okay. Now, let us see how Woodward reported the synthesis of quinine. So, as I said in 19th century as well as early 20th century. So, people spend lot of time on the chemical synthesis of quinine and during the second world war uh, so many soldiers died because of the non availability of quinine. Okay. And that time the Polaroid company very well known and very famous company. So, they were using quinine for a different reason. So, they were using quinine as a light sensitizer okay that's photo company okay as a light sensitizer and woodward has been consultant to this polaroid company so the polaroid company asked him whether he can develop a good method for the synthesis of quinine so that's how the polaroid company funded the project on the synthesis of quinine okay 
So according to Woodward, quinine can be made from the quinotoxin because the quinotoxin has been already converted into quinine by Paul Rebe and Kindler. So he thought if he makes this then that should constitute what we call it as a formal synthesis of quinine. And this quinotoxin can be obtained from this as well as the corresponding ester okay, via a Claisen reaction. Okay. So you can see you can generate anion and attack here and you will get a beta keto ester and then beta keto ester decarboxylation will give quinotoxin. So now he has to make these two starting materials or key intermediates. So the first one you can draw like this okay, can be made from this hydroxy pyridine. Okay. And this for the hydroxy pyridine he started from the meta hydroxy benzaldehyde. So you take meta hydroxy benzaldehyde and treat with this amine. Okay. So this first undergoes the imine formation on the aldehyde. Okay. Then it undergoes an intramolecular cyclization on treatment with acid to give hydroxy isoquinolate. Then you do a managed reaction. So you introduce the CH2 piperidyl group at alpha to the hydroxyl group. Then you treat with sodium ethoxide and methanol. You get this and that was converted into the corresponding methyl hydroxy isoquinolate. Okay. This on treatment with barium salt. Okay. So basically you deprotonate the acidic phenolic proton. Then you do the hydrogenation. Okay. When you do the hydrogenation, the hydrogenation takes place at the pyridine aromatic ring. Okay. Then you do the next step that is high pressure hydrogenation of the phenolic aromatic ring followed by oxidation of the hydroxyl group to corresponding ketone using chromium trioxide and acetic acid. So he got a mixture of these two where this is the major product because since you are using high pressure hydrogenation and when you use hydrogenation cis product should be the major product. So the, that was a major product. So once you have the major product and that also was crystalline. So once it is crystalline it is easy to isolate and proceed further. So he took the crystalline compound okay, and treated with sodium ethoxide and this particular reagent. So this reagent is known to introduce NO group, okay, known to introduce nitroso group next to the ketone. So when he did that what he got was this compound. I will come to the mechanism of this a little later. Basically the idea is to convert this into a double bond. Okay, you need a double bond vinyl group isn't it? Basically that idea is to get or convert this oxime into double bond. So you can see that you know see this whole thing should be a vinyl group. Okay. Then you reduce oxime to NH2 okay. you can do with uh, LH or you can also do it with hydrogenation condition. Now if you treat with the excess methyl iodide what will happen? It will form the corresponding quaternary salt. Okay. It will form the corresponding quaternary salt and this on treatment with potassium hydroxide will undergo Hoffman elimination to give the less substituted alkene. Okay. So once you have that then you treat with potassium cyanate and before that I will just give the mechanism of uh, the introduction of the nitroso group. So you have this and treat with sodium ethoxide and NOOET you get this compound is not it. So the mechanism is first it generates enolate okay. then upon treatment with uh, nitroso compound the enolate that is a carbon ion attacks the nitrogen of NO to give this particular intermediate. Now what will happen this O minus will come back and eliminate the OET. So basically as I said it is a good reagent to introduce the NO group. Okay. However, next when you use 
sodium methoxide because sodium methoxide is a base which you have to use to introduce the NO group. Now the sodium methoxide will attack the carbonyl group and this bond will break. Okay. This bond will break and that will give you the corresponding oxide. Okay. So then let us see and with this key intermediate in hand the next is you have to make this carboxylic acid as ester because for the Claisen reaction you need this ester. Then treat with ethanol and HCl. So ethanol and HCl not only converted the carboxylic acid into ester but also hydrolyzed this urea derivative to corresponding NH. Now on treatment with benzyl chloride okay, it is like a schottel bowman reaction you benzylate the secondary amine then you, you have this uh, ester okay, this uh, known compound okay, uh, then you do the Claisen reaction. So the Claisen reaction gives the beta keto ester. Okay. This beta keto ester can be decarboxylated with 6 normal HCl. So if you reflex it for some time you get quinotoxin. Okay. So this is how Woodward completed the formal synthesis of quinine because he synthesized only quinotoxin and quinotoxin has been already converted into quinine by Robey. So, this constitutes a formal total synthesis of quinine. However, there was some controversy. So, what happened? Paul Rabe, when he reported the synthesis of quinine from quinotoxin, he did not publish the complete experimental details. Later, he published several other papers related to the synthesis of many closely related synchronal alkaloids but he never published the full experimental details of quinotoxin to quinine. So Gilbert Stark who completed the first asymmetric synthesis of quinine, he had his own reservation. When this full experimental details were not known for the conversion of quinotoxin to quinine, then the total synthesis of quinine reported by Woodward may not be valid. Isn't it? So he has made, after all, he has made only quinotoxin. He has not made quinine. He thought that since quinotoxin has been already converted into quinine by Paul Rebe, he did not carry out the conversion of quinotoxin to quinine. So there were many papers, and finally, Robert Williams and his student from Colorado University, they took upon this project, repeated the same reactions reported by Paul Rabe in his paper on the conversion of quinotoxin to quinine and they could indeed get quinine in 5 percent yield. So that confirms the formal total synthesis of Woodward is valid. So what did William do? So William first they made the quinotoxin from quinine. So they made about 30 grams of this a reasonably large scale from quinine. Then they treated with sodium bromide followed by treatment with sodium ethoxide. These are the same conditions reported by Paul Rebe and they got the mixture of these two ketones, okay? these two ketones. So one is quinidinone, other one is quininone. So if the reduction of quininone will give quinine, the reduction of quinidinone will give quinidine. According to Paul Rebe, they used aluminum powder. So aluminum powder and then sodium ethoxide ethanol, they could isolate 5 percent yield of quinine. So they, they, they felt that whatever aluminum powder Paul Rebe would have used may be different. That is the reason why they were getting 18 percent yield. Um, and in 2010, uh, Robert Williams, they, they might have got the highest purity aluminum powder, sometimes impurity plays a role. So they, they suggested that impurities present in aluminum powder used by Paul Rabe might have played a role for getting higher yield of quinine from quinino. So what is important was this actually confirmed that 
conversion of quinotoxin to quinine as reported by Paul Rabe could be repeated and so the formal synthesis of quinine by Woodward is valid. Okay. So now I will quickly talk about uh, Stark's first asymmetric total synthesis of quinine and until then there was no report on asymmetric synthesis though there were many racemic synthesis known and the first key step was the SN2 uh, substitution. Then this can be obtained by the reduction of the corresponding imine. This imine can be obtained from the ketone and azide. So, if you do a starting a reaction the N3 you can reduce to NH2 that will automatically form a imine by reacting with the ketone. And this can be redrawn like this and this can be obtained by in two steps by treating this compound with butyl lithium and adding to the aldehyde you will get an alcohol that alcohol upon oxidation will get the ketone. So, basically the major focus of this work should be on preparing this compound. So, he started with this known compound and with a established chiral center one chiral center is already there. So, and then he opened this 5 membered lactone with the trimethyl aluminum and diethylamine and protected the primary alcohol as TBSE. Okay. Then you generate the enolate here. Okay. So, by treating with LDA you generate the enolate and quench with this iodide. Okay. The 2 carbon alkylation takes place. This upon treatment with PPTS. So, the TBS group can be selectively cleaved. Once it is cleaved, then it cyclizes to give the 5 membered lactone. Basically, if you see what you have done is you have attached a 2 carbon unit at alpha position of this lactone. Okay. Then it is an ester, it is a cyclic ester lactone. If you reduce with dibol, you will convert this lactone into lactol. This is upon enol ether vitic you will get the corresponding enol ether. This upon treatment with triphenyl phosphine dead and this diphenyl phosphoryl azide it basically a Mitsunobu reaction converts this OH into azide followed by hydrolysis of enol ether you get the aldehyde. Okay. Once you have this aldehyde, so this is a known compound treat with LDA. So, you generate the corresponding lithium derivative add to this aldehyde you get the corresponding alcohol. So, now Swern oxidation will give the ketone and treatment with triphenyl phosphine. So, triphenyl phosphine will form immunophosphorine that immunophosphorine intramolecularly undergo azobitic like reaction to get the corresponding 6 membered cyclic imine. Once you have this then reduction with sodium borohydride or sodium borohydride will reduce the imine to give the corresponding substituted piperidine derivative. Okay. So, what you need to be done this TBDAPS group should be removed converted into a leaving group so that the cyclization can take place. So, the TBDPS was removed using HF in acetonitrile and followed by treatment with methyl chloride the SN2 displacement take took place to give the the core structure of quinine. So, what is left is introduction of the hydroxyl group. So, that was done by treating with LDA and in fact it is known in the literature where they have used potassium tetrabutoxide followed by oxygen treatment and removal of uh, extra hydrogen of the peroxide with dimethyl sulphide gives quinine. Okay. Overall if you look at this whole synthesis reported by Stark it involved 13 longest linear sequence uh, with an overall yield of 18 percent. 18 percent overall yield for 13 step is really a very good, very good synthesis and also this is the first asymmetric synthesis of such a complex natural product known in the literature. Thank you.